Hi, this is Meta Tamal. Um, I'm a senior computer scientist in data services team. And in one of my previous videos, I showed you a remote example. Um, so we basically had a flash flex space application that hit a Java class on the server that returned some products about some phones. And then we, def we displayed the information about those phones on, on the flex site um, using remoting. And we took the same um, sample. We converted that into a JavaScript HTML based sample. And we did the same thing, but this time from JavaScript and HTML. But we hit the same destination and get the same results and display them in, in HTML JavaScript. So in this talk, I want to show you how you can do the same thing in Java. But but before I do that, let me just quickly remind you what the application looked like. So this is the Flash version. Uh, we hit Get Data, and it, it displays data. Uh, and then let me just quickly show you the HTML version. So I just changed Swift. So HTML. Now we don't have any flash involved here. We hit get data and then we display a bunch of data. Um, so let's see how we can do the same thing in Java. Um, so before I go through the code, let me show you the example quickly. Um, um, so our data services is running, by the way, as you can see. Uh, but let's. Um, I have a, I have this folder called Flex. Um, where my sample is. One thing that you're going to realize is that is this jar, data services dash client jar. This is basically the client Java client SDK that we've provided with data services. And then my sample is under samples product and products product. So this product arrow is my sample. So first let's uh, compile these. Um, one thing to realize is I'm compiling um, these um, Java classes. I am providing data services client jar in the class path because these classes obviously they depend on um, our client SDK so let's compile it it's compiled and now let's run it again as I'm running it I'm providing data services client.jar in the class path let's open it up and as you can see um, this is this is just a, um, a, a Java window that has some category a description image kind of columns so let's hit get products and boom as you can see we displayed the same data, but this time from desktop from Java, which is pretty cool. Um, now let's take a look at the some code and see how this is done. So the code for this example is it's pretty basic. First, I have a product.java. This is basically my value object that holds whatever is going to be returned from the server. So it has product ID, name, description, image, and just getters and setters for it. Um, and then after that, I have product arrow. This is my main class that that I just show you. Um, it doesn't do much other than just create a. It creates a. It's a. It creates a table. Uh, and then it, it has a button uh, that's called get products. And then it just um, starts showing the UI basically. Uh, so that not much is interesting here from data services perspective. And then then we have our table again. This table class. Uh, it just sets the dimensions and then you know sets some properties on the UI. Again, there's not much interesting stuff happening here, uh, but most of the action happens in table model. So model is what you know it, it's what table uses to basically get to data services and and you know get data and display that data. Um, so in our model, um, first we define some channel and destination properties. And if you remember our previous examples, this looks very familiar. And uh, we have our remote object that we're going to initialize. Uh, we have our list of products that we're going to, you know, we have a list that we're going to hold all those products. And that's it. Uh, so once we create a model, we initialize our remote object um, in initial initialization. As you can see, we have we create a channel with the ID and the URL that's defined on the server. And then we add that channel to the channel set. We create our remote object with, with the destination ID. And then we just uh, set that channel set to, to the remote object. So as, as far as remote object is concerned, it's ready to go. But it's, it hasn't done the remote object call yet. Uh, it's just waiting for that. Uh, and that happens in this method. Uh, so when the user clicks the get data button, this method gets called. And all it does is basically uh, it calls the invoke method on the remote object with get products. So this makes a remoting call to get products method on the server side, gets the result back and returns to products. Uh, one thing that you might realize here that's a little bit different than Flash and JavaScript is that um, there are no events involved here. So there's no result or front fault handle here. Instead, the invoke call blocks and it returns the result right away. 
if, and if there's a problem then it throws an exception that you have to catch in the, uh, this is the invocation exception so we catch that and we show a, a dialog otherwise we get the result back and, uh, and assign it to products and then we just do this fire table rows inserted call this is a swing thing so basically we are telling Java swing that um, our data updated so why don't you just go ahead and update our table and the rest of the code, it's, it's just stuff that I need to I needed to add for Swing to display the products correctly. Um, but the bulk of the code that you care about, as far as data sources is concerned, is basically initializing the remote object and making your remote call. And it, it's very similar to how you would do this in Flash or JavaScript. And that's the beauty of data services is that we provide all these different client SDKs for different types of platforms so you can write native applications talking to data services but the APIs themselves they haven't changed much we try to keep them as consistent as possible across different platforms so hopefully this was useful and thanks for listening